Hi, okay, so uh, I'm going to do some examples for you uh, of all the exam papers uh, which you can then use for preparation for uh, first test which is a combination of chapters 1 to 4 for microeconomics uh, 2 to 1. Okay, so the first question that we are going to look at is uh, drawing of simple demand and supply curves and uh, showing what will happen to equilibrium price and quantity when we have a movement in uh, one of the prices of substitute goods. So we are asked to uh, to draw uh, demand and supply for butter and what will happen to equilibrium price and quantity of butter if uh, and the first question will be if there's an increase in the price of margarine. Okay, so, so butter and margarine are substitute products from one another. So we are buying butter. Uh, what will happen to butter if the price of margarine increase? So let's uh, just draw a basic demand and supply curve. So here we go. That's our demand. And this is our supply. So the price which is on this axis here. So this is our price and this is our quantity. And this is demand and this is supply. Okay, so what happens? Price of margarine increase. That means relative to margarine, the price of butter becomes cheaper. Okay, so what will happen? The demand, because it becomes cheaper relative to margarine, the demand will increase. So here's our demand increase. This means that from our original equilibrium price, let's just say star, and our equilibrium quantity, which is star as well, it will now increase to our new equilibrium okay so nothing is happening um, at or with supply it's just demand that increase as a result of the price change okay so this is star two so here we go so as a result of the increase in the price of margarine we will now demand a more butter and the price will also increase Okay, so the further following question will be uh, if there's an increase in the price of milk. So what will happen to butter? Okay, so again, uh, milk is used as an input to produce butter. So this means that this uh, scenario will have an impact on the supply, not the demand, but the supply. So if we draw, uh, so this is first, let's start with our equilibrium price and quantity. Here we go. This is our equilibrium quantity and our equilibrium price star. Okay, so we have a increase in the inputs, in one of the inputs, the prices of one of the inputs increase, which means that it will impact the supply, not the demand. So if there's an increase in uh, the input, what will happen to the price of the good? So at the at a higher price or the price will increase which will mean that our technology will then actually decrease or our technology will not be able to absorb the increase in price if we want to be technical so that means our supply curve will shift to the left or it will reduce or decrease so we see that the change so this is the change in the the supply curve, we will now have new equilibrium. So this will then be star 2. And we have a, a new price. So as a result of the increase in price, uh, butter, uh, sorry, of milk, which is an input, we will have an increase in price and we will have a decrease in the amount that have been, or well, that's, that's demanded at equilibrium. And our supply curve shifted to the left or decreased. Okay, so next we move on to uh, consumer uh, equilibrium, right, consumer choices. 
And this question is uh, we have our original utility maximization of market baskets of goods and services. And in this graph, it is initially at point A. And then there's a price change. So one of the goods is price change. And then the consumer is maximizing uh, his utility at point B. So it moves from A to point B. So now we want to know what is the substitution effect. So what's the substitution effect of the quantity of clothes that have been purchased? Purchased. Okay, so we have food and food and clothing. So the price of clothing actually increased. So you can see that via the movement of the budget line. So initially, the budget line was at the point where it intersected point A. Uh, and now it moved inwards. So if it moves inwards, it technically means that the good has increased in price. Okay, so first of all, we know this is the initial uh, consumer maximization and that it has moved to point B. So the first movement that is taking place and that's taking place on the indifference curve is a substitution effect. So the substitution effect is a movement along the original indifference curve. So that means if we have a look here and it's uh, linear to uh, the budget line B, that means at point C, that is our first movement. So from C1 to C2, that's the movement on the indifference curve, that reflects our substitute effect. So the next question will be, uh, what is our income effect? The income effect will be the movement from C to B. So as I substitute uh, my clothes for food, uh, or in this case my food for clothes, how, what's the, uh, what's the, how, do I actually become, uh, do I have more and better purchase power as a result of the price change? So we can now see that uh, C2 to C3 represent our income effect. So the substitution effect is from C1 to C2. The income effect is from C2 to C3, which is on the new budget line, and tangent to the indifference curve, which is at B. And that means our total net effect, our total effect is from C1 to C2, which is positive. And if we have a positive total effect, and both is positive, uh, the income and the substitution effect, what do we have then? What type of good do we actually have? Yeah, that's a normal good. Okay, so next example that we're going to look at is a example from chapter 2. And we want to estimate the elasticity. So if we want to estimate the elasticity and we are giving you the supply and demand equations, we can actually get the information that we require from our demand and supply equations to estimate our elasticity. But we would require you to measure the elasticity at a specific point or specific, specific price and quantity. So if we give you, for example, a demand and supply equation, uh, you can, for the same product, you can estimate the equilibrium price and quantity and then if you ask you for the elasticity at equilibrium uh, you have the price and the quantity so let's do that as an example here so uh, i want to know what's the pr uh, price elasticity of demand at equilibrium so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to determine the price and then the quantity of uh, this market so let's start. So that means we have uh, 1,800 plus 240 price. And we set the price, the demand and supply equations equal to one another to get the, the price and the quantity at our equilibrium. Okay, so that's 3550 minus 266P. So now we just get P. So we say 240P. Um, then we say plus 266p, and this equals 3550 minus 1800. So this means, let me just get my calculator. 
uh, 2 for 0 plus 2 double 6 and that's 5 or 6 price equals 3550 minus 1800 and that gives us 171750 so that means p equals 3.46 okay so i made a mistake sorry i just need to double check again so 240 multiplied by 3.46 that's actually 830 okay so this means that our quantity will now be 26 2630 there we go so this is the price and the quantity at which we want to determine the price elasticity of demand or the supply so let's quickly get the price elasticity of demand Okay, so I've added the price elasticity equation. This is price elasticity. Uh, okay, so the change in quantity divided by the cha change in price, we do not have that value. However, that value is the same as the value in front of the P, which is the inverse of the slope of the demand curve. So that means that value there, this value here, is equal to minus two double six. Okay, so this is the inverse of the slope of the demand curve. Okay, so let's uh, put that into our equation. So uh, price elasticity equals uh, minus two double six, and then we multiply that with price and quantity. Now price at equilibrium is 3.46 and we divide that with the quantity which is 2630 uh, the same as our uh, the, the point uh, at which we want to determine elasticity so that means our elasticity, price elasticity equals let me quickly get my calculator 3.46 divided by 2630 equals and we multiply that with 266 so that means we have a negative 0 0.35 so this is our price elasticity uh, for demand at equilibrium price so if we want to go and determine the price elasticity of supply it will be exactly the same principle the only thing that we will change let's do that quickly so price elasticity and this is of supply will then be a, we again use the slope which is the inverse of the slope of the uh, this of the sorry of the supply curve so that means it's this value here multiplied by 3.46 divided by 2 six three zero and then we get our price elasticity of supply of 3.46 divided by 2630 multiply that with 240 0.3 Two, and it's a positive value because it's price elasticity of supply which is a positive value okay so thanks uh, for for checking out that some of the examples uh, this one is a textbook example the others were exam paper examples i hope this helped you uh, if not let me know and we can have a look at some other examples i'll be putting up one more uh, video uh, for chapter 3 and 4 which we will be looking at uh, the consumer again uh, I might do one or more elasticity examples uh, so if you have any examples that you want to, to give me email me and then we can have a look at it and I'll do it for you not a problem I hope this helped uh, see you again later cheers